the desert, the land of little rain, but infinite potential. What's up to all my environmental lit fans out there? It's your boy Ian, and I'm here today to do a book review on Mary Austin's The Land of Little Rain, which is an awesome piece of environmental literature. It was first released in 1903, or that's when the essays were first written and compiled. And it takes place in Eastern California, in the desert of Eastern California. Mary Austin is a really cool figure because she is the real John Muir or Henry David Thoreau. Because if we think of Henry David Thoreau and Walden Pond, he was right next to the city. He could just trot into the city or to Boston in, very, in a very small amount of time. If we look at John Muir, he would spend time in the, in the Sierras and out in nature, but he also had a life he moved around a lot, but Mary Austin lived for decades out in the Owens Valley, which is in this part of California. Uh, so it's southeast of the Bay Area, northeast of uh, Los Angeles, and kind of west, northwest of Las Vegas, and it's west of Death Valley. And she, she is such an influential figure because in the early 1900s, there was something called the California Water Wars, where up here in Mono Lake and up here, the, um, Los Angeles basically stole all the water, used corruption. A guy named Mulholland, if you guys ever saw the David Lynch movie, Mulholland Drive, or have been to Los Angeles and been on Mulholland Drive. He, they stole all the land from all the lakes and all the rivers up there, and it caused a huge controversy. There was violence, there was uproars, you know, uh, there were uproars. It's a pretty cool history once you look into it because, you know, a ton of um, people in Los Angeles move people up there to get on boards and for corruption, pay people off, and it's, and if you are an environmentalist, you know that, look how far of a journey that is. That if you take water from an area that's already a desert, if you take a water from a desert, what's that going to do to an ecosystem? And I've spent a ton of time in this ecosystem because growing up in Las Vegas, I went skiing out in Mammoth Lakes, which is, you know, in the Owens Valley and, you know, camped out here, hiked out here, spent a bunch of time out in this area. It's one of my favorite areas in the country. I'm actually sad there is, it's very undeveloped and that, so, Mary Oliver was living a rugged lifestyle as a female and as a writer and as a creator for decades out in the Owens Valley before, while, you know, the other transcendentalists, the nature poets and the nature writers of the time in England and around the world weren't living this rugged of a lifestyle. She was one of the first. And I was reading some stuff and people were calling her an eco-feminist. I'm like, she didn't know any of that. She was an, a naturalist and an eco spiritual ecologist, an environmentalist, one, a person who lived alongside the Shoshone tribes and the Paiute tribes out there. And that it's a very admirable thing. And this book, is this book as good as Walden? Is this book as good as my first summer in the Sierra? Sierra? Absolutely not. It's probably only 30% as good. This is a, if I rated this on an objective level, like reading this today, if this was released today, I would give this a two out of a 10. But well, I'll take that back. I would give it a six out of a 10. There's some fluff in here, but some of the nature writing in here, for those who live in the desert or who have experienced the desert or want to understand the desert is some of the best writing available for sure mary austin has this victorian style it's this weird victorian style the very educated victorian style that suddenly meets the desert the uninhabited owens valley desert um which and if you guys go to the owens valley today um big pine lone pine mammoth uh, Mammoth is at, will develop Bishop California. It's really undeveloped still. There's probably only less than 10,000 people living there now. So back in the day, it's absolutely deserted. So this book has some of the best nature writing around. And so I would, so what she captures and this area is so unique and I would recommend people go and check this area out because if you go down to Tucson and Phoenix and Arizona, right? There's there's desert down there that's kind of green. There's saguaro, saguaros and farm that you can farm down there. And if you kind of start going north, then you hit the Mojave Desert, you know, Las Vegas and, you know, the Grand, not the Grand Canyon, but, you know, it's part of the desert in Utah. And it's almost unlivable. There's very little water. There's very little plant life. But then as you move up into the Sierras, into, um, you know, central, um, um, Central East California, Central Nevada, you kind of get this mix of desert, that Mojave Desert, then like high, high, uh, high desert. And it's really cool because it's really uninhabited. So this is me out at Convict Lake. So the other cool thing is the Sierra Mountains. When we think of you, when I say the Sierra Mountains, you think Yosemite or maybe even Lake Tahoe, right? But the Sierra is when they first start. So when you like when you first see the Sierras, like when I would drive from Las Vegas over something called West Guard Pass, 
when this, the Sierras are so pointy, they're almost like the Tetons in Wyoming, that they are very pointy and very sharp and they very dynamic and they have snow, but then right down below them is this deserty type of area. And you know, this day when I was out here, it wasn't the land of little rain. It was the, it was the land of lots of rain, lots of cold, lots of snow, lots of wind. This was in May, if you could believe it. This was like May 31st. I went skiing, we, I was powder skiing in Mammoth. It was pretty insane. This area is so great. And Mary Oliver, uh, not Mary Oliver, I'm sorry, excuse me, not the poet. Mary Austin really captures that because she, some of her best essays is when she talks about um, and they're at the start. So if you guys want to read through this or get a copy online, of course, read The Land of Little Rain. That's an essay. The Pocket Hunter, The Scavengers, and My Neighbor's Field. Because she gives depictions of the deer and of... And of the coyotes and the bird life and all this fauna that was there that isn't there anymore because of Maholland uh, because of the water wars that happened in California all the water that was taken and she actually had a meeting with Maholland and she called him out she said I know what you're going to do you're not just going to take a little you're going to take it all you're going to come in here you're going to, you're going to take it all and there's a transcript that says that when she left he told his assistant oh my god she's on to us she knows she's the first person that actually knows what we're trying to pull here and still to this day, they are stealing water from this land. They were hurting the fauna and the animal life to fuel Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is an absolute joke. Crime, homelessness, everyone living without a purpose, everyone living for a status of, for 70 degrees and sunny every single day it is unsustainable living. Just as in living in Las Vegas is unsustainable living. It is a sad place and you know, and that is stealing to feel this, to feel Los Angeles, to feel the tens of millions of people that live in Southern California. The water doesn't come from the ocean, everybody. The electricity and everything that they get doesn't come from the ocean, doesn't come from Mount Baldy and the, you know, the, sand, uh, the mountains, you know, behind Los Angeles to the east of Los Angeles. No, it comes from other places. And it's really sad. And even though California is shrinking right now because of their, you know, crazy politics, it will grow eventually california will get more people again things will you know things um things pr things will progress in california one day will have 50 million people and where are they going to get the water where are they going to get to these things and who are they what are they taking from it's very sad like you know in california you hear about all these environmentalists and green green energy but their the history of california and what they've done to this environment is really sad and this Mary, Mary Austin really shows us what that life is before. And in this text, she talks about, she confronts people who live out here, who work out here, who, the sheep herders, the hunters, the uh, vagabonds, the recluses. She has, she talks about some of these people. It's really cool. So another cool fact, um, maybe it's not in this photo. Well, let's see. So out here, do you see this little, uh, let me blow this up full screen for you guys. If you guys look at this little green area right here, that is, area right there is the most prestigious college in the United States. Yes, you heard me, the most prestigious college in the United States. It's called, oops, ooh, the set's looking pretty fire. It's called Deep Springs College, everybody. And Deep Springs College is a two-year college and it's men's only. And there, it, you, if you get in, it has, so what I mean by the prestigious, it has the lowest acceptance rate. There, you know, um, you look at Harvard or whatever, they have an 8% acceptance rate. I think this one has less than a 1% acceptance rate. For sure, because the, the routine out there is that you there's no technology. I, maybe you can use computers under supervision, but you can't bring a phone. You can't bring these things. And you live out with your professor. So you live in these little houses, and your professors live with you. But your professors are Ivy League scholars, very good scholars who are probably just trying to take a sabbatical. So you're living, you're, so you wake up, and you go outside, and there is your professor living there with you. And all the kids around you are some of the most gifted and um, gifted students in the country also. So you're living with a ton of brainiacs and you have to do daily chores. You have to do daily chores with, with working with animals and working on the land and farming. And it, it's kind of this really wholesome lifestyle. I would have, obviously I would have loved to go there. Anyone would have loved to go there. I remember a kid, uh, one of the students I used to teach applied for it. Um, his dad was, he was, you know, a rich kid. His dad was Obama's uh, environment it, 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 speaking of, he was in his uh, env uh env his environmental lawyer he worked under the obama administration uh as an environmental lawyer like his the head of that for the lawyers but he, i don't think he got in out here which says a lot that he had a 4.0 and was very smart went to prestigious private schools uh, before he came to the school i was at obviously so this book in this area is really cool and this is there's deep stream college out there and there's a raven that i saw 
So I would recommend, yeah, here's some just photos. I'm going to take you guys through the slideshow. I would recommend that you guys read this book. I would 100% recommend this book for everybody. There are so many different things. The writing is beautiful. Some, like I said, some of the sketches of the coyotes and stuff are great. So I'll just, um, that's it. This is just a short review. This is just a short review of Mary Austin's book. I just wanted to highlight it, highlight this and this whole area. Yeah. Here's me doing some yoga out at the lake. Oh yeah. There's a nice shot. It's sad. I didn't have a better camera. This Raven was literally right in front of us, but all I had was a, 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 a old iPhone six, uh, of this Raven flying around on this really kind area. Here's me out at mammoth skiing. This is in August. Actually, this, this, these photos are from August. These are from all different types. Look at the snow. This is August 31st. We were skiing up there <laughs> on that little patch of snow. There's my dad. Uh, there's my dad skiing. Um, Here's me out of the lake. And it was really sad, actually, if you look at this last photo um, <laughs> of us. But there was a deer right there. And we were at this lake. This was another lake. And there were so many people from, I assume, Los Angeles. There were just hundreds of people. And, you know, there's water in this little forest right here. But, you know, and then once you leave this little area, then it's just desert. And it's like there's this deer right here. And I, I kind of felt bad that it was trying. I was taking a pee out, you know, right next to the lake. Whoops. I had to take this pee on this, like, kind of hike around the lake. And... I almost fell upon a deer, which was absolutely crazy. So anyway, everybody, this is the end of the review of Mary Austin's The Land of Little Rain. We cover, talked about, let me know, know what you guys think about the California Water War, what you guys think about this book. This is a very good book, and I would recommend it for everybody.